recoil MS 65 4 P there is also an MS 65 which is just these are the PA mids it's just singles so if you just need a single replacement that's what you'd buy is the MS 65 if you want a pair MS 65 4 uh, 4 ohm pair so uh, the tweeters come in pairs uh, this is the TW 380 this is the TW 250 uh, let's see TW 250 will be uh, $40 per pair shipped TW 380 which is the bigger one is $60 per pair shipped and then the MS 65-4P those are going to be $50 per pair shipped we'll break into the big tweeters first uh, they actually come with a little instruction booklet um, let's see what it says that's the TV let me look at it See now it says the TW250 plays down to, okay I see, 2K and then the bigger one plays down to 1.5K. And then the recommended high pass crossovers on both are 5.5 and 5K. One inch, one and a half inch dome, voice calls slash dome. Uh, both ferrite, big, little, all that kind of stuff. So there's the dimensions. So, uh, oh 180 watts and 100 watts, there you go. So, but we'll do a sweep on them. These have the external crossovers, which is nice, which is just probably a cap and then maybe some sort of tweeter protection circuit. Uh, I'd love to open that up. We'll open that up here. Give me a second. All right, so the, the recoil team has, uh, yeah, it's just a little Mylar cap, 4.7 microfarad, 250 volt, with a little uh, uh, circuit breaker, tweeter protection ceramic, uh, and a little circuit board. Uh, tweeter looks like pretty much you know anything else out there this does no it doesn't have a boot it has a little terminal thing though which is kind of cool like that that you would actually plug in does it have the spades there you go so spade connectors and then it has this little trim ring which I thought was a nice touch just a little just a little pretty let's do a sweep on it all right so this is just a free air sweep so it's looking at 3.7 as the DCR and an FS of 784, uh, which is good, of course, if you go up an octave, that is about 1.5, which is what they recommend. So that's good, though, because sometimes, like when you see on Parts Express, it'll say the treater plays down to, you know, 780 hertz. And technically it does, but you don't want to be anywhere near that. So because it just stresses out the treater and it makes it move too much, and then you end up with a burnt treater. So again, you want to go an octave, uh, at least, which is what they recommend, and then actually the cro that's that's the lowest it will play is an octave up, which is 1500 hertz, and then with a 4.7, what that's probably about 5k, yeah. So it goes all the way up to 5k again. What that what that gives you, yes, it does it does it limit your pass band? Yes, but it does that for good reason, so that you can handle more power. See, it, it has less pass band, but you you get more power handling, so you can run it louder. Okay, see how that works. There's always that compromise. So let's get some of the others out of the box and test those. Last thing before I put these away. Um, yeah, with an 800 hertz uh, FS, yeah, you can cross these down to like 1.5, like for a PA setup. That's where typically the tweeter or horn is, is uh, the crossover point is set at. You can also use these for home theater if you'd like, especially in an MTM array, which is also known as a Diopolito or Doppolito, depending on how you pronounce it. Uh, array where it's a mid tweeter and mid and then typically on that crossover arrangement you want to have 18 db slopes at least 12 if not 18 db slopes um, some of it is for phase and some of it is for lobing um, but you, also it, you want to have a low fs right around 1500 hertz so for mtm configurations these would be pretty good they're going to be very sensitive and they're also going to be four ohms so make sure you observe uh, impedance and, and you can probably uh, dial them down with a, a 4 ohm L pad or a stereo 8 ohm L pad wired in parallel if you wire the two pots in parallel. That's another way to do it. But that's a great application for these as well. And talk about effortless. I mean, talk about having a lot of uh, sound projected. These would be amazing for home because they're super loud. What do you know? This is just a mini version. Let me get that down. So it actually uses the same crossover, So, but it looks like a smaller uh, ceramic circuit breaker. So it probably pops sooner is what 
I'm talking about what, what that basically describes. So it's the same cap, same value, same voltage. Um, the, this, this tweeter is actually much smaller, uh, about half the size, or at least a third smaller, uh, as far as magnet size and depth and all that kind of stuff. I think I, you can pause the video earlier on the, the dimensions and things like that. So. so yeah, a little bit higher FS. Looks like 940, which is still very low for a tweeter. And 3.8 uh, on that, on the uh, impedance. So you just do a little free air sweep to get those specs. Uh, one thing to also note, again, the, these come with a little trim ring as well, which is uh, sometimes uh, handy, especially when uh, you're retrofitting them or, you know, the cutout isn't quite round. So as you see, it doesn't have the little tabs on the opposite sides like most of these bullet tweeters do. These are on the same side, and then, of course, positive is on the left. Uh, and then it has the angled uh, spade connectors that can go up on the side instead of this, this way. So that way it doesn't really affect your, your cutout. So, and I'm sure there's cutout specs as well on there. Again, just want to show that real quick, what it looks like. It's really nice. Again, you could use this one. This this one's actually a little bit better um, because in a, well, for, for a Doppelito uh, MTM configuration, you want that space to be as small as possible. The, the spacing between the drivers to be as small as possible. But I'll get into that in, a, in another home theater, uh, what's the word, video because th that's one of my favorite setups is the MTM configuration. Focus, motherfucker. So, you know, again, not that this is anything revolutionary. So it just shows you you could do cool shit, how to calculate shit. You should probably already know if you're buying raw drivers, but it helps. So the dimensions, let me see if we can get that without the shadow. So... Yes, no, yes, no. What is it saying? Yes, no, 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 no. Crossover setting the speaker sizes, but I recommend active crossover. Oh, well, okay, yes. Well, it actually should be higher than that, than 100. Um, you should actually be running these, uh, a PA mid that doesn't have any real flex to it, you should actually be running about 400. Uh, and then all the way up to 8K, or what you do is you put a slight low pass in it so it doesn't, um, lower the impedance too much at the crossover point between the tweeter and the mid. So, I don't know what it's saying, yes or no, those pictures look alike. You guys tell me, you study that picture, you tell me. So, because, you know, I read the instructions, but I don't, I don't typically follow them. I like to use stuff the way that I want to use it. Let's see, the TSPs. Do, 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 do. 75 RMS, 3 ohm. Uh -huh. Mining depth, pressed paper, fiber, KSV, which is, I think, capped on. Uh, BL, only 4.7. Interesting. So we'll see what they do on the suite. Ta da! I think I showed these before. I can't remember now. So, you know, not the biggest ones on the market for sure. But uh, remember that this is just the Echo Series, which is their, I don't want to say it's entry level, but it's just sort of like their main brand. And then there's the Echo Pro, uh, which will be, you know, higher performance. But let's get them on the computer. All right, so we're just doing a free air sweep. Nice big peaky peak. Uh, focus, there we go. Uh, 112. So yeah, so you shouldn't ever run it down to the FS. Because uh, you, again, you're going to run into trouble. You want to be at least an octave, if not two octaves. So I recommend two octaves, which would be 400 hertz, uh, and probably a 24 at least, yeah, or at least a 6 dB, if not a 24 dB, or I'm sorry, at least a 6 dB slope, if not a 12 dB slope. So there you go. Slow down, Patrick. Um, looks like, I think that's about it. Let me, actually, let me break these in real quick. Uh, I want to show you the difference in TSPs before and after break-in. The TSPs technically do change, but the crossover parameters and if it's a woofer, the box parameters do not change. So don't, don't be so um, anal retentive about having the TSPs on your subwoofer to make the perfect box. Again, perfection doesn't exist. It's sort of a, a fudgery fudge cake of a uh, fudge factory. So immediately I'm, I'm hearing voices in my head telling me, Patrick, you don't believe in breaking in a woofer. It's, it's false information. Well, I'm saying they're giving you false information that you have to break it in. You don't have to break it in. 
Now, I do like to bring it in just to see the difference between before and after, but I also do break in uh, to make sure that it's okay. And that if it takes a little abuse, it's not gonna just fucking flop apart. That's why I give stuff a three fucking year warranty and nobody else does. So, but the way that I break them in is uh, th there are, you can read, there's several methods we, people talk about. The best one I like, which is easiest on the equipment, is um, to find the FS, which, what did we say, is 100 hertz? So the reason why, I, and I can sit there and watch the uh, current meter right there, this guy, which is my Harbor Freight current meter. It's not gonna be that much difference on the current. But basically what I do is I find the FS and then I just let it run for a little bit. And then you let it get a little stinky. Right now it's probably pushing a little too hard. It's moving about, uh, about five millimeter. Oh, somebody's calling. I'm gonna decline this shit. Uh, but anyways. We're gonna push a little bit. So, but the reason why I use the FS is because that's what makes the woofer automatically move the most. It's the most efficient frequency for the driver is the resonant frequency because that's what it, that's what frequency it resonates at. So, and like I said, it's easier on the equipment. It draws less current. So the amplifier is not working really hard. Uh, you're less likely to clip and some other things. So does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we're, we're at the FS, uh, what does it say? 112.4? Let's see, let's do it again. So a slight change, see? That was the change though. It's still right around 100 hertz. So, and again, that's well within, well, look at the peak. The peak got way peakier. Uh, but uh, that, again, that's well within the parameters. And again, it's not gonna change any crossover frequency um, or anything like that. You still wanna cross up at 400 hertz. Now, one of the suggestions that I do have for recoil is that they include a high pass filter, at least a, um, a simple capacitor. You don't have to do an inductor and a capacitor. Um, just to kind of protect the, the mid. And again, this is, you want it to be right around 50 uh, microfarad and probably at least 100 volts, uh, just to make sure that uh, you don't blow it right off the bat. Because if you cross it up at 100 and you run it that way, you're gonna blow them. So that's the way it goes. But uh, I think that was it. I gotta return that phone call. But um, that's it, these are the mids. I'll go over the prices again one last time. Now, uh, somebody was asking, you know, do you get discounts or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, sure, if you know, you buy a shit ton. Cause, and they, these aren't posted on the website yet or on the Amazon store. It takes the website they can do quicker. I'll be right with you. Okay. Uh, the website they can do quicker um, just because it's in-house. Um, and I think they have to do some other stuff to get it on to Amazon as well as get it out to the distributors before they actually post it on the Amazon. Because there's some stuff that I posted, I think, a couple weeks ago. It's still not in the Amazon store, but it's on the... Uh, web store. So again, TW uh, 250, which is the smaller tweeter, those are $40 a pair shipped. TW 380, which is the larger tweeter, those are $60 a pair shipped. And then the mids, uh, the pair is uh, $50. That's MS 65 4P. Uh, and then the singles should be right around half that uh, at about $25 each if you want to just buy singles. Uh, and then of course you can wire them series parallel to get over whatever impedance you want, depending on your application and all that kind of stuff. But I love you guys. I will talk to you later.